In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend 
and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Some seed fell into a rich soil and produced its crop. Some seed fell into a rich soil and produced its crop. You care for the earth, give it water, you fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. Some seed fell into a rich soil and produced its crop. And thus you provide for the earth, you drench its furrows, you level it, soften it with showers, you bless its growth. <laughs> and produced its crop. You crown the year with your goodness, abundance flows in your steps. In the pastures of the wilderness it flows. Some seed fell into rich soil and produced its crop. The hills are guarded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks. The valleys are dirt with wheat, they shout for joy, yes, they sing. Some seed fell into rich soil and produced its crop. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning with labor pains together until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we await for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowd, crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat there, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and he sowed, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they had not much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to him who has will more be to him who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, You shall indeed hear, but never understand, and you shall indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are heavy of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest they should perceive with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn for me to heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly, I say to you, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the delight in riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine, imagine a bus stop and a queue waiting for the buses. And then a man appears, goes up to people in the queue and at random, as a total stranger, says to a woman in the queue, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? What would she think? Well, variety of thoughts, but chiefly, she would be puzzled. She would hear 
but not understand? How can a stranger say words like that to another stranger in a bus queue? It's not that she doesn't understand the words. It's precisely because she understands the words that she's puzzled. Two strangers cannot talk like that. And that's not to do with words. That's to do with not sharing a certain kind of life. If the man who'd said, shall I compare thee to a summer's day, had been, say, engaged to the woman, then she would have understood the words which she heard because they have enough in common to sustain a statement like that. Today's Gospel, which turns on hearing and not understanding or understanding. Today's Gospel is in three parts. We usually leave out the middle one. In the first part, Jesus tells a parable. In the second part, Jesus explains why this has not been understood. And in the third, he explains to the disciples its meaning. We live in space as well as time. Think again of today's gospel and how space matters because it forms the relationship or not between Jesus and his hearers. When Jesus tells the parable, he separated by water from the crowd. He's in a boat there on the beach at some distance, you notice. He's told the parable and the crowd has heard it at some level. Then a little detail as always, the disciples go close to him and the second part, the exchange about hearing and not understanding happens. The crowd is distant, the disciples are close. That's a recurring pattern in the Gospels. There's a contrast between the crowd and the disciples. The crowd is formless, shapeless, strangers to each other. Today's crowd is not tomorrow's crowd. Today's disciples have a stable relationship with Jesus. So they can hear and understand more, just as Isaiah had predicted. What then could the third part of today's gospel be? We've seen that the parable, although heard, lacks its full meaning. What would the crowd on the beach have made of a description of farming practices in the Holy Land 2,000 years ago? They weren't close enough to Jesus to be given the full meaning. And the full meaning isn't just a dis colorful description of farming practices, but how does each one of us stand with Christ, with God? As always, the images of what God does are lavish, 
without measure. The seed in the parable is scattered. All kinds of soil receive it. But although we can't be saved without Christ, we will not be saved without our own acceptance. We are no puppets, we're nobody stooges, even gods. Grace makes us more free, not less. So what each of us is affects the fruitfulness of what God does lavishly to all of us. So as the woman at the bus stop understood every word that the stranger said to her, but couldn't find its meaning because they came from a stranger, so we're told, if we're not close to Christ, when we read the scriptures, we won't get their full meaning, although at some level, we'll understand every word. The depth of our soil, of who we are, conditions how far we can accept God's endless, lavish kindness towards us and be transformed. But we have to relate to God to read the scriptures fully. Otherwise, we're just a collection of Middle Eastern texts from two, three thousand years ago. There won't be God's word for us because it will be a set of strangers speaking to us from centuries ago. But this is the living word of God in scripture and completely in Jesus Christ. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God. Let us turn in confidence to the Father, the lavish giver of all good gifts. Let us pray for all members of God's holy church, that they may always be deeply rooted in the word of God and may be ministers of that word to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let us pray that wisdom be given to all our national and local leaders at this time when social restrictions are being eased, that they may be guided to do what is right and responsible for all those whom they govern. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who suffer in mind or body, that the Lord may remain near to them and may grace them with knowledge of his closeness. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the faithful departed, that the Lord in his loving mercy may forgive them their sins and grant them eternal rest. 
Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> in a moment of silence, let us commend to the Lord through the intercession of the saints all our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Let us unite these prayers with those of our mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. In your mercy, O Lord, deliver your people from the pestilence that presently afflicts them. To those who are sick, grant health in mind and body. To those who are in fear or in isolation, grant peace of mind and the consolation of your Holy Spirit. To those who care for the sick and all who are in danger, grant your protection and courage. Welcome those who have died into your eternal rest. Console those who grieve, and as by your grace, we work to establish your kingdom. Grant that we may be a sign of hope for the world, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that we are consumed by those who believe they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of a resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, our Father Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be good.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.